we have all been there and done that, ruined a potentially amazing vacation by just not planning or booking properly and feeling then kind of let down the whole time we're away. There are some very simple tips to ensure you have the best possible time and joining us this evening to share her know-how and some interesting travel survey results is Angie Campanelli, a travel expert. Welcome, Angie. Thank you guys so much for having me. So it must be common for people to mess up Vacation Planning 101. Uh, Yes, very common. A lot of people don't want to do the work ahead of time. You know, they just want to point and click and uh, book the trip and not really put in that sort of legwork and doing the research. Mm. Um, But if you, an interesting stat, because Holiday Inn did do a survey recently, women are four times as likely than men to enjoy the planning and booking stage. So it's the women at the helm of planning that trip. Of course. Well, yeah, well, or, mm-hmm. or, or I put my daughter in charge of our trip to Croatia. She's very organized. She enjoyed doing it, and everything was fabulous. It would have been mu- much better to leave it in her hands than my husband's, who just, you said, just let's go. Right, which, it is, out there. which is, tends to be their strategy about the whole thing with trips, is it's a vacation starting from the, day, the moment we think <laughs> yeah. we're going to go until we leave. I don't want to do any work. Uh, yeah, I know. But it must be a common mistake if they're now doing surveys. Oh, exactly. For sure. So what did the survey, what did you find? Well, the survey results Mm -hmm. are in, I'm just kidding, drum roll. Um, Well, basically, the most important factor for Canadians is the room in the suite. So 44% of surveyed Canadians said that the actual place that they're staying really impacts their overall happiness. And if you think about it, especially with kids and if you're traveling with a family, That makes a lot of sense. I mean, you are going for um, the attractions and maybe beaches or the culture in the city. But if the place that you're going back to at night isn't somewhere that you want to be, it can ruin the whole thing. Mm. Mm. Um, So uh, do you guys agree? Do you find that? Yeah, absolutely. I do. But what about for people who can't afford a top of the, like we'd all love to have, you know, the the top of the line Mm -hmm. suite. But what are the factors involved in choosing the right room. Well, I'm traveling with a family of five. So top of the line um, has nothing to do with the five star um, or, you know, expenses because it does cost a lot of money. What I find a lot of people are looking for is just space. You don't want to go traveling and feel like you're confined in a little box. So holiday in hotels and um, hotels like that offer suites. And if you can go online on your trip days and find a suite, you can get a dining room, a small kitchenette, a living space, quarters so that when you are traveling and then you go back to your room after a busy day, people have their own privacy and places to go and unwind. The kids can be in an area. Mom and dad can be in another, especially if you're traveling with young children. I mean, space is key. And again, that's not necessarily linked to price tag. We recently went to New York City um, in the spring and we found an older hotel with a large square footage and we were able to set up nooks. We used bed sheets to create little walls and privacy for different people in the family. And everyone's really happy when they have their own um, space. And that's something people don't think about. They think, oh, we're just sleeping there and then we're going out. But mm-hmm. you're not just sleeping there. You're coming back and kids are tired and you don't want them jumping on your bed and your stuff and your clothes. And Yeah. I mean, I think when you're younger, you know, in the 20, in your 20s or you're traveling with a girlfriend and whatnot, it's easier to get away with just like one bed and the, and the four walls because you're not there much. But I think once you get a little bit beyond that stage of your life and you're looking to bring your family or you and your spouse need a bit of a getaway or a reconnection, it's really important that the room um, is up to your liking. And again, it's about that, that service feel like you really want good service and you want the space and you want amenities that you don't have to constantly keep paying for. Have you ever gone to a hotel and you get there and, and, you know, you have to pay for the Wi-Fi and pay for the gym and there's all these add-ons. and Nice. Oh, my (laughs) gosh, everything. The Holiday Inns have the kids eat free program, right? right? So that's a good. Which a lot of families love. So all of their um, on-site restaurants, you can take children under 12 and they eat free with adults. And that's a huge savings for families, like, you know, and a huge plus and free Wi-Fi, too, because a lot of kids these days, Mm. you know, like it or hate it. They're on their apps. They want to be on their games at night. They might want to curl up to a Netflix video or something. And so having that Wi-Fi included in the room um, so that they can have a little bit of downtime, I think is also a really um, important factor. And pools, you know, these resort-like amenities at at the non-resort price is another 
big thing when you're booking your travel and you want to get savings. I think people hate being nickel and dimed. Yes. Just tell me the price and then don't nickel and dime me every time I move. So for all the stressed and often disappointed women and moms out there, uh, share your tips so going forward everyone has a good time. My first and foremost, the tip is always booking the right hotel in the right room. Because if you don't have the space to accommodate your family and give them a little bit of privacy, you're not going to have a good time. I'm a huge proponent myself of the kitchenette. A lot of people say, I'm going away, I don't want to cook. But I find when you're with kids, um, oftentimes they're not ready to eat when you are. And and it's just nice sometimes to just make them a little uh, instant oatmeal while you're having your morning coffee so you don't have to rush out and get food. So I really think um, kitchenettes are a, a big plus. Um, And then making sure that you've got the amenities that you want. And like you said, the price should encompass everything. There shouldn't be those surprises that start straining the family down the road and knowing when to book, you know, booking ahead of time, um, traveling during the week can save you a lot of money. If you're if you decide you can take the time off and you can book a hotel room you know, on those weeknights instead of the weekends, that can Mm -hmm. save you a lot of money as well. Plus there's, you could get the pool to yourself. You could have the amenities to yourself. It's, it's much quieter um, and more room selection. So those Mm -hmm. suites will likely be, be available and not necessarily cost you a ton of money. So those are a couple of things that can really help. um, But again, it takes a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the research before you go. How far ahead would you suggest people plan for a holiday with a family. If you're looking to maximize savings, 21 days is the magic number. So, Oh, I thought you were going to say eight months. <laughs> no, no, because sometimes if you book way, way, way in advance, you don't get those deals, you know, that you can get closer to. Uh, two weeks out will still get you um, some pretty good savings as well. And this is, um, of course, factoring in that you might have transportation like flights and whatnot. Once you get a lot of people say, well, we're just going to wait till the last minute and the airlines and the hotels are going to be clearing out those rooms. And that's what we want. We want those deals. It doesn't necessarily work that way. So it just depends how much of a gambler you are in terms of your travel plans. Are there really people with with three or four children who wait till the last minute? I mean... I just didn't think that was possible. It wasn't possible when I had my... <laughs> it's not possible for me because no. I'm a, I am like to plan. I like to know what I'm packing and where I'm going. Um, I, like I said, if you're, say you're a couple, my husband and I used to book our plane tickets, pre-children, fly across the world and have like one hotel booked maybe three days in, but then everything else before that and after that was we go where we go, we stay where we stay. Uh, would we do that with kids? Yeah, no. no. But I like your idea uh, of doing something with the children, and that's giving them the camera to take the oh, vacation yeah. photos. And it, and it is. There's a lot of um, happiness and gratification. I think over 60% of people report that when you come back from the vacation, you get the most satisfaction of looking back over those photos, chatting about memories. My family does something where, where we always do the, what was the best part of your day? Or what was your favorite part of the trip? Which allows everybody the opportunity opportunity to tell stories, you know, and reconnect. And, you know, our 12-year-old, it really gets him talking. Even the three-year-old starts sharing favorite memories from the trips. And we try to do that every day. But yes, giving the kids the camera and letting them snap away. Sometimes it's dangerous if you're giving them a smartphone because (laughs) my my toddler will hold the button down and then we get 93 of the same triple chin. Okay, so tell everyone where they can connect with you, the Holiday Inn, or or find out more about this survey. Well, for more um, on all this information, you can go to HolidayInn.com. There's a ton of um, stats and deals. And then for more on general family travel um, tips, I have a website called FamilyTravelGuide.ca. Lots of tips, lots of tricks, and um, information for people looking to get some savings and maximize their fun. Well, Angie Campanelli, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. This is what she said. We'll be right back.